right, folks. We just got done over at John Kimber's house, and now we're over at John Morton's house. And, you know, we're all right here in Central Florida, not far from each other, where the soil is good, where there's a little bit of cold weather, but not too severe. And I think we are just in a little bit of an, uh, an advantage here at this location, as opposed to people just in South Florida, where you think, you know, the temperature may be better you know, because it's warmer down there, there's no frost. Well, they got that horrible lime rock soil in a lot of places. Here it's got more sandy and acidic soil. So we're able to grow a lot more variety without the problems they're having. And yeah, we get a really bad freeze maybe every 10, 15, 20 years. But, you know, if you do a little protecting, they can survive that. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I just uh, wanted to basically ask John the same question I asked John Kimber. What kind of got you into this? Like, how you know? How did we meet? I can't. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So years ago, I was uh, out driving around, uh, buying up fruit that I couldn't find other places. So I spent a lot of time in the Asian markets and things like that. And uh, I came across a sign for Jabba de Kaba, and I had seen I had seen the name uh, in books and on websites, and I'd seen it, and I was always deterred. I saw that eight years, you know, eight to ten years seed seed to, to fruit time i thought nah i'm good it's, i don't know you know that's a long time it's a lot of investment and uh but i saw a sign for it i said okay well i'll stop and it stopped and it was at uh robert's house robert hopkins not not unrelated to hopkins nursery but uh robert hopkins uh, i pulled up to his house one day and knocked on his door and said do you have java de Caba? he said well I said they're not in season right now but yeah i got them and um you know so i chatted with him and he talked to me about it for a little while and uh, he eventually, you know, he sold me some trees, and then I asked him because I, I didn't have money. I was I was uh, newly married and uh, just you know work, working a job, but didn't have a lot of disposable income. I said, well, can I work for you, you know, on the weekends and trade for plants? And he agreed to uh, uh, afford me that opportunity. And he had mentioned your name at some point. I had seen you. I'd started getting on Tropical Fruit Forum and other other uh, places on the internet. And uh, I saw, and, and then I'd emailed you one day, and I said, hey, can I? Uh, I want to buy Scions, I think was what I what I had because I had uh, rootstock ready and uh, I thought the time was right, time of year was right. And you said, sure, come on out. And uh, I came to your place. Back when I used to let people come. Back, when, back in the old <laughs> days, yeah. yeah. And you know, when you had more time on your hands and uh, I ended up, you know, sitting and getting things from you and then, you know, working out a similar deal for a while where, you know, you taught me everything that I know. I mean, lack, you know, not, not to, not to, you know, overstate, but really learned everything working at, working, uh, at your place, you know, years and years ago. And, uh, that's, that's how, that's how, that's how I got to where I am today. So I met you on the forum, on the tropical fruit forum. I, I see, I saw your name there for sure. Yeah, I, I don't remember, know we ever talked I remember there, seeing but... you were local and mm -hmm. being like, Oh, this cat's local. You really had like a passion for it. I could tell you were like all about it. So I was like, all right, this this guy, you know, I'll let him come by. He's just asking all these questions. He seems really interested. So I was like, feed the fire. But that's interesting. I didn't realize that you knew Robert before you knew me mm -hmm. and John, gave Robert his treats. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. really, you met Robert before you met John. Yep. And before you met me. Sure. But John gave you the treat, you know, John gave oh, yeah. Robert the treat. So we're all kind of connected by this love for fruit. Oh yeah, everyone's connected. Every, everyone's got the same lineage of trees. Yeah. Uh, right. In Central Florida, more more or less, I think everyone's everyone's on the same same genetics for, for the most part. And you had seen some of my videos on grafting. Oh, I'd seen your grafting video, the very first one uh, where you grafted uh, like a red and uh, Probably a, a glass of Viana. Yeah, uh, a stretch piece on this yeah, glass of Viana. Yeah, okay. that's what it was. Uh, and yeah, that was it. That was enough. I said, all right, I want to do this too. And uh, how do I make that happen? Well, I'm proud of you, man. I think you really uh, take it to the next level. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate all the opportunities. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I talk to people a lot online and they, you know, they say, oh, do you know Adam? And I'm like, I snickered myself and I'm like, well, he's 20 minutes down the road. and. Spent a lot of time at his farm over the years, uh, but you know that's how most of my collection, just about everything that I I collected over probably the past five plus years, has been through you directly or indirectly. Um, and now you got stuff I don't have. And now you know I've I've uh, you know I've taken I've taken it up a little bit and, and you know looked for for new ways of uh, getting new material and things like that. Uh, and you is, you also fruit out. fruit these things before me every time. You know I, it's just like you said though you know it's, it's when you have you've got five acres and I don't know. 
five thousand trees, but I'm yeah, maybe more, maybe bunch. less, you yeah, know. Right. And I'm here on you know three tenths of an acre, and I, you know I've got my nursery license now, and I can do a little bit more. But you know it's a smaller piece of property, so it's a lot easier to look at every tree every day. And I go around and I hand water everything, and you know just just because I don't have irrigation put in yet. Are you selling seeds or what? Yeah, I sell yeah. seeds when yeah. it comes up. Um, you know they they come up especially from. Uh, from the scarlet that's okay. that's one of the ones that i got from you years ago i got i got five scarlet trees from you and uh people want to find you facebook yeah facebook uh you can you can look at me uh morton and sons nursery is uh nice. the name of my nursery if you're ever looking for it you can find that on facebook but really you can just directly message me uh john travis morton uh, i'm there i usually get back to people fairly quickly uh you know when when the time's right but yeah i'm, I'm happy to hear from people especially people who uh who are willing to learn, interested, eager to learn is, is the thing, you know? If you already know everything, well, you don't need me for anything. So, you know, uh, I'm sure you've dealt with those before, yeah, you know, but yeah. uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to hear from people, really. If somebody's eager to learn and, and want to, I'll bend over backwards to, to help somebody further themselves in, in all that uh, any day of the week. Excellent. Let's take a look around and see what you got going on. All right. Sounds good. So right here, Sabara right here. Yeah. This is the Avenue of Sabara, just a uh, descending order from, uh, you know, fruiting mature, 15 gallon, 15 gallon, not quite there yet. Seven gallons moving the way down. Uh, you can never have enough of these trees. There's, this is, these are, these trees are money in the bank. Uh, you buy them small, grow them up for a little while, trade them, sell them, use them as a root stock. Uh, there's never been a day when I uh, I, I want to get caught, you know, with my pants down, saying somebody has a has a really great scion or, or, or something for me, and I don't have a place to put it. I want to always be able to park a scion somewhere because uh, I want to always be able to collect. You know, that's that's really at the end of the day what what I'm interested in. Oh, check it out. What's that? Your uh, uh, that is a rainforest yeah, plum. Yeah, rainforest uh, plum. Candeliana. Yeah. Eugenia, Eugenia in Candeliana. In a little seven gallon pot. And uh, there's a tank of tuba there next to it. In the same pot? Yeah, right here. Oh, community uh -huh. pot. Yeah, okay. community pots. And a bunch of weeds. There's a bunch of weeds <laughs> there too, because uh, I get behind on my weeding sometimes. Uh, this is a seed propagation area over here. This is... Uh... He keeps those on there to keep the critters out. Yeah, you gotta keep, keep all the uh, birds and squirrels and Anyone who might want to chew on your seeds, uh, you got to keep them out. So, you know, whenever I'm getting new uh, new varieties in, uh, you know, you plant them, plant them in your in your seed trays, grow them out six months or so, and uh, bump them up. I try to I try to do my best record keeping wise. That's that's always a real challenge, I think. Are these a, navels over here? There, yeah, that's a tray of navels. I actually yeah, I got a good eye. I was I was worried navels. about those. They. Uh, they took a lot longer to come up than I than I thought. Mine started I, coming up. I got like three or four. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah I remember. I remember hearing a lot of people saying, "They're not coming up. They're not coming up." And I said, "Well, they're not coming up for me either." And then slowly <laughs> but surely, you know, here they are start start popping up. And this is that rare blue guacuyea. Yeah, it's the blue uh, guacuyea. It's uh, new introduction. Those, yeah, those are those are brand new to the U.S. They're nearly impossible to find. Um, if you can get your hands on one, keep keep hold of it because uh, there. <laughs> I don't think there's any more coming in. No. Not that I'm aware of. Nope. So, uh, you know, what, what's I've, this big guy behind you there? This is a. Uh, it's the Hawthorne Hawk. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying <laughs> to remember. It's, burrito, it's, 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 it's burrito. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. Um, I've got a few of them. I've got one here. There's another one over there, and there's three more over there. But yeah, this one's probably the nicest one. It's real pretty. The bark's flaked off real nice. Uh, real if you bark. get in there, yeah, it's real pale underneath. This is probably the biggest one that I've gotten. It's just, I mean, it's big, it's beautiful, it's happy. It really likes this this spot in the yard where it's not too much sun, it's not too little. They 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 cook a little bit if you get yeah. around in full sun. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yours is so much bigger than mine, man. I've I've uh, again, you know, it's, you can dump you can dump a lot more into a into a tree when you only have you know. I've got five of these examples, so you know I'm trying to make sure that they all, every one of them has to look nice because somebody somebody's gonna show up to my house one day and say they want one, and you know. Uh, what about some of these rare varieties? So you got, let's just sure. do a real quick once over. Oh like, man, Sap all right. Sapusea, because I just read the. Yeah, no, those are uh, Sapusea right there. Uh -huh. uh, that one it'll say on the other side. I don't, that's I don't the, remember. These top are my head. Sapusea again. Oh, okay, more. So Sapusea. that's a variety of Fetrantha that has a recessed, like a small aborted seed, a lot of times. 
And then yeah. what are these here? Uh, these are, the they're the lemongrass. Lemongrass. Uh, the Plenia Ariana lemongrass, which is which is a pretty, pretty uh, interesting one. Pretty hard to come by. Not a lot of them floating around in the US right now. New introduction. Uh, yeah, this one is, uh, it's a white Fatrantha. Um, that that one's brand new. These uh, these just came up. A very very little little information on them right now. Um, you know, one that I'm I'm pretty excited about is um, is it's the Pingo de Mel. It's uh, it's a, it's a plenty of Java de Caba, but the the varietal on it is Pingo de Mel or Honey Drop, and uh, that's one that's a new commercial variety out of Brazil. Uh, or it's, it's new to us, it's out of Brazil, and yeah, they're growing right. commercially down there. Right. I think that one's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be something something to get excited about when, when they finally uh, that's, start fruiting. That's one you got that I don't have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's that. Uh, what do we got? Broncomel, that's another one. That's a new one out of Brazil right now. There's a few of, literally, I think I've got 10. I think I've got 10 on my hands. They're so hard to come, come across right now. that's a good one, yeah. I heard really good things. It's a white fruit. Uh, I've heard good things. Big fruit, yeah. uh, supposed to be a small seed. Yeah. So we'll see, you know. Yeah. Uh, th those are ones right there that I mean, they're they're nearly nearly impossible to get a hold of. I, I think I know one or two people who are who are who are keeping any any significant amount of them, and they're they're hard to come by. Uh, variegated. Yeah, there's the variegated sabra right here. Uh, I got that from a collector in California. He knows who he is. Thank you very much for that. That was a trade we made. I don't want to blow your spot up on, uh, <laughs> I don't want you getting inboxed. Well, I so, got mine from John, so I'm blowing his spot up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's a, uh, right here I've got uh, uh, Zona de Mata. Oh, the that's, new one. That's, Zona a, that's a new one. Zona Ariana, right. Actually, here's some of the uh, Novak, uh, Novak Trunk Flora hybrid seeds. Okay, okay. Right there. That's from the big tree at John Kimber's I showed you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few of the, the watermelon, Ariana watermelon, that's another one that's pretty hard to come by right now. I've got, I mean, just, that's it. Gotcha. That's, gotcha. That side of the tray is it. Uh, Very cool, But man. yeah, yeah. I've got this back here, which is a oh, Mirciaria yeah. Guacuyea. Yeah. So this is a Mirciaria Guacuyea. It flowered last year and it hasn't fruited just yet, but it's uh, it's definitely a variety I'm excited Grafted? about. Grafted? Grafted. On the Glazio Viana. Glazio Viana, yeah, that's one that you encouraged me strongly to collect at uh, Charles's house years yeah. ago. And I said, you know, I remember thinking, ah, it doesn't seem like that, you know, anything I'm real concerned about. And I'm glad I picked it up when yeah. I did. Yeah. I've got this uh, oh, nice. kombucha tree nice. right is that here. Your biggest one? This is the biggest kombucha that I have. Linea edulis. Linea edulis. This came from you years ago. Oh, okay. It's a little seedling I got from you. Uh, years and years ago, and you know, I'm happy that I got it. I've seen them flower that size, believe it or not. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So here's another uh, spirito. Yeah, it's another one. They've got uh, they've got a pretty distinct shape, which is which is real nice. Yeah, and that um, pale bark. The, the the pale bark, yeah, it absolutely, it, it gives them away. Who's this in your hand here? Uh, this is an ESALQ, if I remember oh, correctly. Okay. Oh. Um, you didn't this get that from me, did you? I did. I got this from you. No, this is okay. a cutting you sold. Okay. You saying. gave me you gave me a cutting years ago. Yeah. And I grafted it and it took and I tried I tried it a few times and I wasn't able to get a lot of yeah. a lot of success. And this one finally finally did it. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm happy with it. It's uh it's nice, it's pretty. Another kombucha. <laughs> There's another kombucha, yeah. Different leaf on this one, I noticed. It's like, it's uh it's definitely it's got a real big leaf on it. These yeah. ones came from Excalibur. Yeah, I yeah. was digging around through Excalibur one day yeah. and they the price was right that day, so I I, I went in. That is Inflata? Inflata. Man, yeah. yours looks great. This is Plinia. We're spitting over. This is Plinia Inflata. And this is a rare one from uh, Jim West out of Ecuador, I believe. Mm -hmm. And man, his looks great. A lot better than mine ever did. Yeah. Here's uh, here's the parent Sapusea plant that I have. Thanks. Uh, so Plinia fetrantha, Sapusea. Yep. We're probably saying it wrong, but probably S A P U C A I A. -A. A, -A. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you speak Portuguese, correct us. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta go to Forvo and check the. Uh... Sapucaia. Uh, I've got uh, a raw sapote tucked back in. It's actually in ground. It's one of the few things that I have in the ground back here. Nice. Is uh, this raw sapote. It's flowering. Uh, I mean, there's no flowers right now, but it's a uh, it's mature tree, so that's nice. Got the Broncovino Otto, An Otto Anderson there. This one is pretty interesting. This is the sibling plant of the anomaly. 
finally got that thing looking good, It's man. nice and it's healthy and uh, still no flowers, still no fruit. You know, I've, I've let mine bush out a lot, but uh, you can, you know, you can, I'm hoping one day, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it'll do it eventually if you just hold on to it long enough. But I mean, I've had this tree at least five years and you probably had it years and years before then. Yes, this tree's about seven years old by now at least. And this is from the same exact batch of seeds that I grew my anomaly from. It's one of the siblings. So it's about seven, eight years old and it really looked like crap for a while, but John was able to bring it back. And um, it's just interesting to see that, you know, two seeds planted from the same batch of seeds and one will do one thing and another will do a different. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's one that, you know, it's a pretty tree, it stays small. It doesn't it doesn't cost much to keep it here and keep it happy, so, you know. Beautiful. I, I do. Uh, there's a Kyperinia. Oh, okay, that's what that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. A plenty of Jabuticaba Kyperinia. I think they're calling it like a species now of its own, like plenty okay. of SPNV. I don't even know. That's fine. Is yours fruity yet? No. It's right there, man. Yeah, I know. It's right on the verge. And I'm like, I want to pot it up and I'm just dragging my feet on it. So if you look at it, it's got a little bit of a smaller leaf than your typical Sabara. And it's more of a bushy habit. This is one that people are really excited about for bonsai culture. And even if you're trying to save space, I mean, the fruit's not really huge, but it's super sweet and it's, you know, really easy to grow. I got my dream right up here, oh, nice. giving us a little bit of shade. Oh, nice. <laughs> got a few fruits on there. Yeah. There's a couple little ones and one decent sized one. I'm happy about them. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, I got those years ago. Those are drafts from right. that I made out at your house. Creep around and show that pot. Cool. Yeah. Just the way it leans over. Oh, yeah. You know, it's cool. funny is where, wherever I put the graft on right here, it, uh, it just grew out kind of sideways and I didn't think to train it or do anything no, it different, great. so I just let it go, it and uh, it got big and tall and pretty. What's, what's over here in this cage? Yeah, this cage is, uh, you gotta keep them locked up because they're <laughs> so, uh, they're, this is treasure. These are um, the Scarlet or Escarlate. Uh, it's that, uh, it's the, the red the red hybrid cro crossed back into the Ariano, or that's the, that's the story I've been told about, about his parentage. I've got these four trees, which came from you years ago. Uh, you know, and they're all flowering and fruiting. There's there's four of them, so they're probably five years old by now, and kind of varying sizes. But they're all the same tree. Uh, you can get, you can look in there. There's vines Double growing fruit. up it, but you can look in. You can see the fruit. There's bugs on it, right? There's ants crawling around on it, but the ants don't really seem to bother it. Nah, they they sit there and hang out, and keeps everything else from messing with it. So I don't, I don't chew them away. Uh, but he he's been able to fruit these a lot more and a lot faster than me. And um, he's really the source for scarlet seeds and such. You know, I haven't been able to produce as many as him. And the only other place we were getting them before was out of Brazil. So it's nice to have someone that's growing these things really well and able to provide us with them. And um, he, uh, this is one that may replace the red in a lot of ways, or, you know, displace it, I should say, because it's just really sweet, really good. People say a little better than the red, you know, so I can eat it a little bit earlier, which is nice. Uh, the fruits tend to be just a hair smaller, but but when that, but they're also a little bit sweeter. Um, I think that just for container culture, though, is really where it, where it serves its best purpose. Because, I mean, it's, I've got one over there that's in a three gallon pot that's about ready to fruit. And I mean, it's it's tiny. So being able to keep something that small and fruited on a porch, on a balcony, uh, with limited space, you know, you don't have to drop a, a you know 25 gallon tree in the ground to get to get good fruit production out of it. Over and over. And that's it. Because right now, I mean, if you look through my yard, it's it's middle Ju mid July right now. It's hotter than hotter than the Dickens. And uh, this is the one tree that's never stops. It's cranking out fruit all year round. It stops in oh. January, February, I'd right. say that's that's about it. January, February, March hits, and you got another crop on it. So um, that one, that one, they've all got flowers and fruit. Every single one. Everything does, and I pick them pretty regularly because I, you know, I'm I'm taking the seeds and either planting them or selling them Who's or this? doing Here, something with them. What is this? Oh, you know what? This is uh, this is a seedling that came from your place. It's the one that dies back every year. It yeah. gets this die back, yeah. and then it comes back to life, and it's completely uh, deciduous. It drops all of its leaves. The only tree that I have on the property that's a, a, a plinia that does that. This has got to be related to that one I have. You know yeah. what I mean? That does the same thing. Uh huh. This yeah. It looks like a hybrid, maybe, man. I, it came from you, and it's always got this weird brown. I mean, it's like yeah. Uh, it was like a chocolate color yeah, on that right. new on that new growth. Anyway, and, yeah. You know, same thing. Kind of beautiful. Uh, it puts out it puts out new growth. 
every year, but it, it goes it goes fully dormant, just drops all the leaves, which which always which always baffles me. You know, I'm like, and I, I remember a couple of, the first time I did it, I swore it was dead. I was like, oh, I killed this yeah, thing, mine too. and I remember being bummed about it. I'm like, oh man, everything else doing great. I wonder what happened, and I left it because I was just lazy and didn't feel like cleaning up in the winter time. And then springtime rolled around and it was there. It came right back. It broke out of it. And uh, so I've been replicating it. I've got a few graphs of oh, it for nice. just to have it, yeah. just to have a backup, yeah. just so that that way, if somebody else is real interested in it, I don't know. I haven't had the fruits. So I don't know what it's like. But if somebody else is interested in growing that, I want to be able to make that available to people. Show us more. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've got these are grafted scarlet trees right here. Nice. Uh, they should be flowering any time now. I don't think there's anything Not on that just yet. So you can see the unions on but, it somewhere. Um, yeah, they actually down here. Or? Uh, no, this no, up is, here. Uh, they're, they're, yes. they're in there. I see two Correct. grafts. Yep, there's one there and one there. Is that a cocktail? You got a white on there? Oh, too? Gosh, this is probably um, Trantha Branca yeah. off of that one okay. right there. Uh, this one is a uh, Novak on one side and Scarlet on the other. So you do a bunch of cocktail trees. I do. If I come across something, um, it's one of those one of those things where uh, if there's an extra branch and it's a, and it's a good looking branch and you don't have to, you know, you can split the tree evenly and not let one of them totally run away with the show. Uh, I like to throw cocktails together because again, you know, if I have a customer and they say, "Hey, I want a tree." I've got a Scarlet, and I was like, "Well, I can get you a Scarlet, but I can also get you a Scarlet that has this other thing attached to it." And you know, it's really, it's no different for me, you know, doing the work, I'm putting them together and saying, okay. And then, you know, if you can grow it out and have two varieties on there, um, I've got some bigger cocktails over here. That's we're, my- We're gonna get to Kastinga. your- Oh, nice. We're gonna get um, to your cocktails, man, because yeah. that is incredible. Um, yeah, this oh, is- Oh, that's uh, a big I, one. I just dropped it into this 20, I couldn't keep it wet in a 15 gallon anymore. So did you hit the top of that? Espoma, is that what I see? Yeah, it's got Espoma. Yeah, Espoma, uh, polytone on the top, probably. Yeah. You yeah. can see where the pe pellets of sulfur are. He that. didn't use a ton. It looks like he used about a cup and a half, two cups maybe. That sounds about right. It's a brand, it's a brand new pot, so it hadn't had anything in it. I'm, I'm expecting that tree to flower hopefully soon. It's probably six, six years of five, yeah. five, six? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I got it from you and it was a runt. Oh. I remember you just gave it to me. You said, ah, this one's real runty. You have it. And, uh, and here it is, you know. Did it justice. Five years later, yeah, you know, which which is which is one of those things, you know. I think I think a lot of times we get an idea. It has to the tree has to look a certain way, it has to be a certain way, and it's just not always the case. You know, any any tree can be can be a success. Um, got some real interesting oh, stuff yeah. in here. These are uh, Plinia fetrantha rosa de pescoco. Oh. Uh, there's four of them right here. This is the one I'm most interested in. Just the leaf habit. Uh, everything about it is totally different. I got one like that. Yeah, it's just mind blowing. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's same a, batch of seeds. Same batch of seeds, a little bit different. Um, because I got those seeds came from your house. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, I've got uh, blue velvets mixed in there. The Paluta Doma Curry. That one there, right? Uh huh. That's yep. Your blue velvet. That's it, and then the Roxa Polpa. Uh, yeah, there's another blue belt. There's a few of them uh, just peppered in. I think those three oh, varieties. Oh, rocks of popo. Yep, yep. There's one there. There's another one back there. There's a few more floating around. Hell of a lot of variety out here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's another good thing about the cocktail trees is he's able to pack in all this variety in this little quarter acre lot or whatever mm -hmm. he's on. He's, oh yeah. He's able to have so much. And you know, I've done cocktail trees before and I guess I didn't take good care of them. But he's able to fruit like what five varieties on one tree. I think I've got I think I've got seven different ones on that tree, I if I like remember a, correctly. Like a record that has to be a record. Man. It's it's a it's true that one that one I was living in a condo. That's when I first met you. I was living in a condo and I bought a I bought a tree in a seven gallon pot for ninety dollars, and uh, it was a good sized tree and it was right about to fruit. And I put it into a fifteen and I grew it and started grafting and grafting and grafting. I'd spend hours outside just grafting every branch. Everywhere I could stick one on, I would, just so I wasn't losing opportunity. And some of them grew and they're huge and some of them stayed tiny forever. Yeah. Um, and it's fine, you know, it's uh, it's one that maybe maybe something will happen, maybe it won't. Uh, but I figured I'm not missing those opportunities. It's parked and, there too, and you can always cut it off and graft from it and you have it there. Well, yeah, that's it. You, It's like a library, you know, you can go, you can put it there, say, all right, when I need you again, or if I need you again, I'll come back, revisit this. And there's some stuff on there that I have replicas of that I wouldn't necessarily need to take from there now. Uh, 
that's a controversial plant right there. This that is a, that's a Z4 hybrid. Oh, okay. Um, which is supposed to be a selection of red that... It's just a little different. Apparently it's a little different. It's supposed to be a little bit better. Um, there's uh, there's always argument about them. Some, some say it's just like the red and some say it's different. And so I figured I'd grow it out and then uh, determine that for myself. That's the way to do it. Uh, but yeah, that's one that I've had had for a couple years now and y'all just wait and see. Fetrantha bronca? Fetrantha bronca, yeah, and you can come in here and you can look and you can see it's flowering all over even on its very, very, very thin tiny branches right here. Yeah. That's not even chopstick size and that's got a flower on it. Uh, and it's really, it's really one that I'm, I'm impressed by. I've eaten exactly one fruit. Here's the seed from it. It, it, it flowers, it flowers profusely and fruit set initially has been low um so we'll see i think it may need uh to be a little bit closer to a pollinating partner so i might take one of those scarlets out of there and move it closer just so it has a has a friend uh, to get along with but big, big leaves it's got real big leaves it's a real pretty tree uh and the and the fruit's just uh it's just a little bit different um i don't have great notes on it because i only had one yeah. but uh, yeah it's exciting though yeah yeah it is i've not fruited that yet uh, a lot of grimmels. Need a lot of grimmels probably yeah. indirectly came from John Kimber. Yeah, or yeah. Directly, yeah. I should say. Uh, yeah, John, John, or uh, or Robert. A lot of uh, when Robert went out of well, when he retired, I went through and I bought a, as much as he'd sell me, as much as I could afford, uh, just because somebody you know he was going, he it was all going to go to waste otherwise. And I figured I'd help him, uh, you know, clear out his property and get rid of some of his extra stock, and I'd end up with extra stock trees for myself. And I ended up with, uh, you know, probably about 20 or so of the uh, decent sized grimmels and just have been growing them out. And every now and then somebody comes by and is in need of one. And, you know, I part with them from time to time. But it's one of those things where, yeah, I remember the first time going to your house and seeing rows of grimmels <laughs> and then just seeing the fruit and tasting the fruit and thinking, yeah, I could deal with that. I could have I could have 10 of these trees and eat fruit off them and I'd be perfectly fine with it's that. It's still so, one of my favorites. Yeah, it's it's uh, hands down. I can't think of a, a bad thing to say about the grimmel. Uh, it's really, it's really a great, a great fruit. Uh, like, like I said, cocktails are, are one of the things that I've always been, uh, had a little bit of fun with. This one is, uh, there's three varieties. There's a red right here, which the ants are. You see the take, flowers on it. The ants are making a little habitat and the graft, there. the graft is right here. Yeah, that's the graft. Here is, uh, this one is a uh, white, a Plinia ariana. Right. And if you, you look, up, there's just, a graft there. If you look at your left hand, you can see right here is where it turns into, uh, Grimmel or no? Grandifolia. Grandifolia. Okay. Grandifolia there. So that's the the the. Looks like you could almost get a flower coming, but can't tell yet. It might be. I'm not sure. But I'm I'm waiting and hoping that the uh, the Grandifolia does something. It's um it's supposed so, to be a really good so fruit. We got three types on this tree. Three types on that tree. Grandifolia, mm -hmm. red, and white. So if you back off, I'll try to show you the different sections of the canopy. But this here is the white. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is that's the right. Grandifolia. Yep. And then back here, all this is the red. Yeah. So, the the cool. red's probably going to get trimmed back a little bit just because so it stays in check. Um, Beautiful. But it's a it's a it's a good it's a good tree. It fruits well. So with the part that fruit fruit. This is an interesting one. These are these are both Novak selections. This is the Novak Polyphora right here, which is in in flower. You can see it's full of buds right now. And the Novak Fetrantha. On the other side, which is also just now started blooming, you can see right here see is, all the flowers. Uh, all there's over. flowers right there, oh, okay. and then there's flowers over here, and you can see down here. There's a graft union here, and there's a graft union over here. The slingshot. Yeah, the, the old slingshot <laughs> graft. Uh, oh, but you got a third graft back here. What's that? It's also uh, uh, Fetrantha. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I I kept them all together. Third just one. just see to, the difference from there to there. So this is another cocktail tree. That's another cocktail. And with these cocktails, you get a big chance for hybrids because they're right next to each other. So whether John likes it or not, he's kind of like a breeder now. All he has to do is plant seeds and look at them and keep track and look for something different. And he's going to get some new varieties here. Mm -hmm. Got some Anonas over here, yeah. which aren't as interesting, but we're there. At, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm happy about them. These I are like, fruit in the pot. I like seeing, yeah, there, there's fruit on that one. Did you graft some of these or did you buy oh, some? Oh, no, no, no. These are almost, uh, only the ones with yellow tags are bought. The other ones are all grafted. Nice, nice. Yeah, so most of them are grafted. Uh, here's one more cocktail tree, which is uh, 
this is the one I was telling you had a lot of dieback. Uh, okay. It had it had an issue, so I had to come in and trim it right here. You can see where this wound is starting to heal over right here, but it had a it had a wound in it, and it looked ugly and nasty. So I cut it back significantly, and this has all been healing back over on itself. And that's the Novak Fatrantha on this side. This side is the Broncovino of the Otto Anderson collection. Oh yeah, this one's got that just that real clear, distinct line where it just separates one to the next, and that's actually a scarlet. You tacked a scarlet. Uh, tacked on a little piece of scarlet on there just because why not? You know, it's fun. You did something that in to spring do. or what? What's that? Did you do that in the spring? I did that in this spring. Yep. Yep. Uh, this tree is probably the one that everyone is more interested in than in almost anything else that I have. This is the original cocktail tree, the encyclopedia. Uh, as as I would call it, or the library, yeah. where you know it's uh, it's a Sabra rootstock, and it's probably about 13 or 14 years old. Um, and then I just started adding stuff. So here you go. We've got uh, the Novak Califloras on there. That one flowers and flowers and flowers. It's got some fruit set on there, which is real nice. Yep, there's your graft union. Um, here's some Sabra actually. Some of the rootstock is flowering right there. Oh, that's interesting. I yeah. let it flower. People don't realize your rootstock's gonna fruit too, so it's like another variety on your cocktail tree. Yeah. The yeah. Sabra is fruiting. Exactly, exactly. I've got uh, here's a little Grimmel branch that, you know, the lower branches tend not to grow as much. They don't really do anything. The light. Um, they don't get the light, and yeah. there it's now there's nothing to stretch for. So yeah. there's that. Here's an Ariana, plenty of Ariana, it's got flowers on it right there. Now is the Ariana grafted onto Grimmel or onto your Sabra? Nope, it's grafted right on here's where it splits. Okay. And Grimmel and, okay. and, and Ariana, okay. it goes back in like that. Uh, here's another piece of that Novak, Novak uh, Califlora. Okay. When we go back to uh, right here, we've got Broncovino, Otto Anderson. That so that's right. that's flowering again. It's got a fruit set down here. Nice. Uh, there's there's some fun happening there. Here's a piece of Grimmel that okay. got oh, yeah, that got added on here. I see. There's Grimmel here. Here's another big Grimmel piece that. Uh, it was growing, it started growing up, and then right here is onto the Grimmel is the Grimmel Red. Grimmel uh, Red Hybrid okay. that I got from you. Okay. Uh, so just, it was like a, just a tiny sliver. A tree within a tree. That was you as much the... as I think you could part with at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I tacked that on and it's it's coming along. It's it's still happening. So uh, what else we got on here? Because you're sure. not you're not done yet. No, man. <laughs> no. So right here is uh Paulista. There are a couple of big Paulista branches. Um, you can see, I think the Graf Union is actually down here. Oh it's yeah, so I see old. it, I see it right um, there. But that's where it splits into Paulista. Here's another Paulista branch right here. There's the Graf Union. I'm still waiting on these to fruit. We'll see what happens with them. Uh, this is an interesting flat leafed Ariana yeah. from your place. Yeah. That uh, you know, it's, and it's flowering. It's got uh, it's got flowers down there. It's fruit before, the and the, it's interesting. The seed the seedlings that come up from they look different than the than the rest of the Ariana's. Nice. So nice. you know I hold on to them. Uh, I keep some. I, I every now and then I'll, I'll sell or trade a few. Um, we got Grimmel again. I was, was this was the the early years. I think about you know it's got a good amount of Grimmel. Look at this uh -oh. this chunk right here. This is the the you know the graft union mm -hmm. and then this is a big old chunk like look it's a tree within mm -hmm. a tree right here look at that yeah. and then that's the coronada hestinga yeah look at that that is one thing that i'll tell anyone if you're making a cocktail tree and you graft in the apex of your tree the absolute top top spot in your tree it's going to take over and that's going to be the piece that gets the biggest so either put something in there that you really really love or let it stay in sabra and keep taking side branches off of it um, because one of those two things will happen. Trunk of flora. Uh, yep, we got trunk of flora this there. Another branch of another variety, trunk of flora. Just want to make sure we don't forget any varieties. Sure, there's scarlet on here. Yeah. I've got a couple of scarlet grafts. Here's a scarlet graft. Yeah. I believe there is a at least one more. I've probably lost them at this point, but there's a couple of scarlet grafts on there. Here's another Novak uh, Fatrantha nice. graft that's on oh, there. Okay. That so one already one. fruited and flowered this year. Nice. This one is, whew, I'm gonna test my memory. Man. No, I can't tell. It looks almost like a scarlet. It might, it, okay, yeah, it is. I'm sorry, this tree gets turned every now and then, and then I forget where things are. These are, <laughs> this is all scarlet, you're right. So that is, uh, that's the trunk of flora, like you said. This one, I think, is actually a Kuiperina piece right. that just never took off. It's not dead, you can scratch yeah. it, it's still green. Yeah, yeah. And it just won't put out growth. Yeah, so just to, to save its own life, it won't grow. I've seen that. Back here, right here is a piece, that is a Spirito. Oh, okay. That's a piece of that. <laughs> I wanted, I didn't want to miss anything, so I just kept tacking them on and tacking them on. 
Um, yeah, and then Coronada, uh, Singa up at the top. Let's I think it. that that's the whole tree. So, so th there's two Ariana varieties on there that are fruiting. Grimmel's fruited. There's a red piece in here. This is a red piece. That one was just for the number, just to yeah. just to add to oh, it. Oh, it's got a fruit on it. Yeah, uh, the Broncovino it. has fruited. So, okay, so at least five. I might be missing some. You want to stand back and get a picture of him with this tree, and we're about to just get a final thought. And yeah. Pick up anything we didn't, anything you, anything you can think of that we didn't focus on. You're still quick. Yeah, this is show. I was happy about that. Just wanted to show. These are a bunch of the Grimmels here. Oh, this is what rust looks like, and it doesn't really hurt the tree. Where did I see some? There's all over there. Yeah, there you yeah. go. A little bit of rust. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really hurt the tree. It's just cosmetic. But these are all just about fruiting size, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my favorite varieties. It's so tolerant of the heat, tolerant of a little drought. It's a beautiful tree. This is one of the best. It really keeps on trucking through, through just about anything you'll come across in Central Florida. Uh, you know, if you're right, if you got drought conditions, if you're gonna plant a tree in the ground and you're worried about how it looks, plant a Grimmel. Uh, it's one that it'll do well in the ground. Uh, the reds, the reds and sabros, if you're not on them with water and with the pH, they're gonna, they're gonna look not as nice. They won't, they'll still perform fine. Uh, but the Grimmel will look real nice and stay in the ground well and be healthy, happy trees. So plant them. All right, we're gonna show you a couple more things. Wrap it up. These are rootstocks, Sab Sabro rootstocks, and they're just the perfect size. You gotta, you gotta prepare. You gotta get ready. If you think, uh, if you think that this doesn't take work, doesn't take time, doesn't take planning, doesn't take effort, you're wrong. I've been buying trees up all year long, uh, preparing, just getting ready for grafting season. Uh, I'm not doing any grafting right now. It's too hot. The trees can't take it. But uh, you know, once we get cooler temperatures, you know, September, October, November, uh, you're gonna find me sitting around here with the grafting knife. Uh, working on working my way through all these root stocks. So I'd encourage people if you want to get into this and you want to start grafting, start thinking about that now. Start thinking about the work that you want to do six months, a year down the road, and start preparing for it. Because the, the root stocks aren't expensive and they're they're not they're not they're not impossible to get a hold of, but you gotta plan ahead. Amen. So here we have a uh, uh, red sugar apple, uh, known as scramosa, and uh, we've got fruits right here. And another one down here, a little bit of a smaller fruit. Really good for growing in a container. A lot of Anonas, like, you know, custard apples, soursop, they're just not going to fruit so well in a pot. But sugar apple is probably one of the best. Yeah. And um, it, it really is. They do, they do real well. Oh, um, if you look, we got a Grimmel in the ground here, yeah. too, doing really well. Of, of the trees in the ground, yeah, this, this Grimmel, all of its new growth is nice and happy. It looks pretty. It's in good shape. Uh, it's it's a it's a very very happy tree. I have a couple of sabra trees in the yeah, ground over beautiful there. Beautiful sabras in the ground over here. Which they're they're probably in the same age range. They're 12, 14 years. Uh, and you know you, you kind of I I, I I didn't prune them as much because I wanted them as a as a, you know a little bit of a screen from the road. So when people drive down my road, they don't you know sit and stare in my front window. But uh, yeah, I put I put these trees in, and they're nice and happy and big. Uh, don't so, take a lot of care just really water water that's that's the main ingredient i mean i amended the hole significantly when i i dug in i filled it with peat uh but you know if you do that you can you can get you know pretty good performance out of the trees they'll fruit they'll be happy healthy uh this one is one that you know defies the conventional pruning techniques but it's funny because the lowest branches aren't the ones that fruit the most right so i'm tempted you know i'm like oh well it'd be nice to have a tree that looked more vase shaped but it's real hard to give, give up fruit yeah, branches. You know how that is, that's uh, true. you know, because uh, I want to eat fruit. And then they got kids, the little ones. You know, they want to sneak in there and they they take fruit. So I'll make it easy for them to get. And besides that, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice little screen from the road. So, well, I guess we could take this time now by the you know the foundation of of this business of selling Jabu de Cabo is really is probably the Sabra. You know the basis. You know the king, like the Budweiser of Jabu mm -hmm. de Cabo. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. But um, you know, once again, really thankful to know you, John. Sure. Thankful for what you've done to get me excited and to fuel my fire. You know, kind of get me. You know, it's like uh, I see you doing something and saying, "Damn, he's doing that." I I got to step my game up. You know, so you've uh, you know put a little fire under my ass to keep my operation going, and I'm really impressed with what you've done. And uh, I think you're making a big difference in influencing the marketplace a lot. 
Well, thanks. It means a lot to hear that from you. Um, similarly, you know, I, I, I owe just about everything I have to, to you uh, from just putting educational videos up online to giving me an opportunity to work at your farm years ago, um, you know, to, to just connections. And, and that's one of the things that I think you, you really drilled, drilled home with me was that there's no need to compete uh, with growers. You know, it's, it's, we should challenge each other to, to step it up and to do the next thing. But uh, this idea that we're com competitive or against each other is, is not the case because there's, there's only a handful of us who do this and we really need to support one another. And, and that's, you've, you've supported me, uh, you know, for years now. And I really, I really appreciate that. And it's something that I think everyone should take away. You need to plan ahead. You need to, you know, remain teachable. If you're looking for somebody to learn, learn from, you need to remain teachable and uh, hopefully, you know, have a level of, of humility that goes along with that. But, you know, always be willing to learn, always be looking for something new. Um, and, and if you're in a position to help somebody out and teach them and spend a few extra minutes with them, try, you know, if you, if you know one more thing than the next guy and you can teach them that just that one thing, it's helpful for them. And you taught me thing after thing after thing, we're incredibly generous with your time and I realize it's tougher now, it's less time in the day. Um, but I do, I genuinely appreciate it and I'd encourage everyone out there to get out there and learn, get out there and do your research, read. Never stop, watch videos, whatever it takes. Go watch a video in Portuguese. It won't make sense to you if you don't speak Portuguese, but you'll get it, you'll get it through. You know, you can turn on the the, the English captions. Or captions. Yeah, it does, still doesn't it. help that much, yeah. but still you get some ideas. You see new things, you see a new technique come up and you say, well, that's something new. How do they do that? And you keep researching, looking into it. Read the technical articles. They might be dry and they might seem boring, but when it when it translates into you being successful uh, in your nursery, it, it's worth it. It's worth every, every minute I've spent on the internet, knows in a book. Uh, so get get after it for sure. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank hey. you so much. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's always right. it's always a pleasure. Maybe we'll do another video soon. I look forward to it. All thank right. you. Thank you.